And a warm welcome along to you, as always. It's Chris Reardon with you, United Kingdom Talk, in the studio again. My God, the heavens have opened here in the UK in the last few days. I've never... Last night, on the way down to uh, the Bingay in uh, the Golden Isle in King's Cross, uh, where I am every Monday night, 8 to 12... And it's we, oh, it's changed again, dear. It's changed again. I meant to tell you. Did I did, did I tell you the other week? Um, he wants to the governor there wanted to try it so that we do bingo eight till eleven, okay, and then eleven to one karaoke. So you kind of you know you say okay, didn't you? Know, don't like to row with the manager, but I thought oh this is this is going to be a bit dodgy. So last night was the first night we were supposed to do that. But what happened was at uh, 11 o'clock, I sort of looked around and I thought, there's no one here who wants to sing tonight. They want to play my bingo. So I did ask on the microphone. I said, right, is anyone here for the karaoke? Oh, no, no, no. All right, then uh, what should we do? Um, and he said, well, to carry on with the bingo, which is great. I understand kind of what he's trying to do there. Quite a, quite a clever idea, really. The idea was because bingo has been for a long time, eight till midnight. All right. And karaoke is, uh, hang on, where, where have I, got? I'm sorry, I've lost the plot there. I've gone wrong now, I've gone wrong. That's it. <laughs> Bingo is 8 to 12. And what he wanted to do was make it 8 to 11 so that those people that quite often come in later, hopefully, will come in earlier. You understand what I mean? So they think, oh, well, if we're going to lose an hour that end, we're coming an hour earlier. But it doesn't always work out like that. And you can end up in with a situation is kind of at 11 o'clock. What could happen is that you could have 30 people there playing the bingo and 20 people come in at 11 o'clock for the karaoke. Do you see where we're going here? So at 11 o'clock, you say, right, we're going to do the karaoke now, which immediately annoys all the bingo players who will probably leave. Now, a lot of those are deaf. We do have a, um, a I say a, a fairly large, a, a group of deaf people of about 10 people who come in for the bingo. Now, you're, <coughs> you're probably wondering how on earth they hear the numbers. Well, they don't. We have uh, TV screens everywhere and the numbers flash up there and that's how they play along. All right. Um. So they'd probably go at 11 o'clock instead of staying to 12 as they do now. Now, you could say, well, why don't you ju just go with the majority of people? Because that can change week on week. So whatever you do at 11 o'clock, you will annoy some people. So at 11 o'clock, OK, we're going to do the karaoke now. The bingo players get fed up and they walk out. OK, maybe they don't come back. I don't know. On the other hand, if you say, right, it's 11 o'clock, that's it. Anyone want to do karaoke? If 20 people put their hands up and say yes, and 20 put their, people put their hands up and say no, or, or 30 people put their hands up and say no, you then say, right, we're going to have another two games of bingo. That will immediately annoy, I nearly swore then, <laughs> immediately PO, OK? <laughs> that will immediately annoy the 20 people that have come in to play the karaoke, who will probably leave. Do you see what I mean? You are in a no-win situation. So last night, got to 11 o'clock. Fortunately, there was no one in there to play the, uh, to do the karaoke. Uh, so we carried on playing bingo till actually right about half past 12. And it was uh, not a bad little night. Quite a nice night last night. And then afterwards, I had a word with the governor and I said, I can see we're going to get into trouble with this. If we change this... This is going to be problems because whatever we do, half the crowd will be upset that, that we either didn't do the bingo or the karaoke. I think you should leave it exactly as it is and with the karaoke on a Wednesday night, which I don't do anymore because I have Wednesday nights off now. Oh, yes. Here's your lucky chance, fellas. I have Wednesday night off now. Your chance to ask me out on a date. Hello. You still there? Oh. Please yourselves. <laughs> so I have Wednesday nights off now. So someone else does the karaoke. That was my decision. I, I just needed a night off during the week. So what we've uh, eventually decided to do is do the bingay on the Monday <clears throat> and leave it as it is. And if it gets to 12 o'clock and you want to go a little bit longer, we carry on a bit longer. So that's great. And of course, I also do the bingay at uh, West Five now in Pope's Lane, Ealing. 
every Tuesday. That one is 8 to 12. Uh, so that was it last night. Very nice night last night. Thank you very much. But the deluge of rain that came down. It was like being... I remember. I always remember being in Florida, driving along the I-4 uh, towards the Disney Village once. Um, always sort of about... About eight years ago now. I always remember driving along there and suddenly there was this storm. And as I've said before, storms in Florida come from nowhere. They really do. I mean, it's it's difficult to believe unless you actually see it with your own eyes. When I'm sure there are people possibly uh, listening or watching at the moment that haven't been out of the UK. You don't know a storm until you've seen one in Florida. One second... It's sunny and bright and really uncomfortably hot and sticky. And then from nowhere comes this blowing wind. No, not from that end. From, from the weather patterns. <laughs> the wind comes from nowhere. All the trees suddenly bend over. And then the rain comes down. Flashes and thunder and lightning. And it was actually like that last night on the way into London. Would have been about about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. You never see so much rain. And we all had to slow down. You could not see the roads. That's what, that's what reminded me of the bit in Florida, because when it happened in Florida, you could not see the lines in the road. That's how much water comes down. It's true. The difference between Florida and here is that here, you know, two hours later, the water is still sitting on the road. Whereas in Florida, you would never, you know, 10 minutes after a storm like that, you would never know that one had happened. Because it's so hot there, all the water quickly ev evaporates back up into the sky or wherever it goes. Amazing amount of rain last night. And anyway, apparently uh, we are due for quite a lot of rain over the next few days. So that's why I'm in the studio today. Um, we're having, well, I've got some sunny spells outside at the moment, but it's also a bit of rain as well. We don't want poor Christopher to get wet, do we? Not in his nicely ironed blue shirt. Got a nice blue shirt on today. Very nice indeed. So uh, last night, uh, bigger pardon, last Wednesday was my first Wednesday off. So what did I do? I'm very pleased to say I caught up with a couple of things that I've been meaning to do for ages. Now, being self-employed, I have to do accounts. You know, put all your figures in, how much you've earned, how much you've spent. So last Wednesday, I finished those off. Now, um, my year runs uh, March, to, is it? I think it's March to February. So to be honest, all the bits of paper and that have been sitting in the uh, in the spare room now for a couple of months. I mean, it, they haven't got to be done from scratch. As I go along, I type things in computer and then at the end of my tax period, I then print everything off and go through it and see. Because you, you always make mistakes. You miss bits out or you put extra bits in. I might say I earned, um, I might say I was paid twice for a Monday night perhaps, instead of once, and you have to go for... Oh, do you have a little bird outside? Hello, little bird! Watch out for my cats! Meow! <laughs> yeah, stupid birds. Shouldn't land in my garden, should they? Eh? <laughs> um, so I do all the figures and all that. Then I print them all out, and I go through them all, and I see what I've missed out, perhaps, and what I haven't missed out, and then I, I, I fix it all like that. And then when it's all done, I get all the receipts and everything like that, <clears throat> all my printouts, and send them off to my accountant, who's actually up in Scotland. <laughs> Beautiful country. If you ever come to the UK, make sure you visit Scotland. Oh, I, I like the countryside. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of buildings and what have you in Glasgow and Edinburgh for you to look at. A lot of architecture. But uh, I personally like like the highlands of Scotland and, and the wildness. Oh, beautiful. Do you know what? Uh, I don't know if I've said this before. If I found someone to share my life with, that's what I'd like to go. I'd like to buy a little place or something like that in the highlands of Scotland among all that terrain, the wildness and all that and, and live there happily ever after. Hopefully... With a, but I would have to have a broadband connection so I could carry on having these little conversations with you. Eh? We like our chit-chats, don't we? And you can always chit-chat back to me by email. 
All right, the email address of the show is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. There is also a postal address. And I've got a new way of showing you the postal address as well. If you're watching, if you're listening, then I'm afraid it's the same as always. But Jason Allen, my friend Jason Allen, jason-allen.co.uk, he makes the little graphics at the beginning of the show and at the end of the show. And he's been doing a little bit of work for little old Chris. Not for nothing, mind. Oh, Christ, he charges an arm and a leg, dear. It's very, very expensive, but you get what you pay for. And if you want the best, you have to pay for it, and that's what I've done. So I'll, I'll be showing you a, a little a little address caption very shortly. How excited... You're, you're excited now, aren't you? Eh? You are excited. I can tell. I can tell. Now, um, <clears throat> so, as I say, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. Buy a little place and um, live in the middle of nowhere among the the wildness of the, perhaps the Scottish Highlands or, or the Welsh um, countryside, somewhere like that, beautiful. Oh, you don't actually have to go up that high. There's some beautiful areas of the UK. The Lake District. If you like countryside, you will love the Lake District. It's beautiful, absolutely stunning. That greenery or the wild animals. We don't really have any dangerous wild animals, fortunately, here in the UK. You know, you haven't got to start running away from tigers or... I mean, we do have um, uh, snakes. We have adders. Okay, you, I've I've only ever seen three adders in my entire life, and all those three, believe it or not, I've seen in the last year when I was jogging just over the forest there. Since I never ever saw a snake, you just don't see uh, wild animals. Oh, I've just knocked something over. Wild, wild animals here in the UK. Spiders, don't worry. Spiders don't bite you here, they, they run away from you. There's nothing like that really at all. So that's, what, that's really honestly where I'd like to live. Somewhere like that. Beautiful, way. Eh? Anyway, uh, that's where my accountant is. He's up, not in the Highlands, but he's up in Scotland, in Kirk Cardbrightshire, I think it's called. Which I've, I've never actually looked that up on the internet. Kirk, oh, it's all one word. Kirk, K-I-R-K-C-U-D... B R I G H T S H I R E. Long name, isn't it? Kirk Cud Brightshire. That's where he is. So I put all my accounts and bits and pieces into a big box and uh, I send them up to him. And then he once again goes through them all and uh, works out how much tax I have to pay. And uh, that's how it all works. Anyway, so all those bits of paper that have been sitting there since February. And I had a night off last Wednesday and I sat in, took me about. About two and a half, three hours to finish all that off, all in a box, and off it went. And you know what? It's a lovely feeling. When you've got something, some, and it is very important that you do these things, otherwise you get all sorts of fines, or you can be put, even put in prison if you don't work out your uh, correct tax and what have you. And it's, it's a marvellous feeling when you've had something that you keep going, you say, oh, I must do that, oh, I must do that, and eventually you do it. And it goes in the box and it's just something great. I, every year that I, I feel this way. There's something great about getting that box of papers, taping it all up and taking it to the post office and it's gone. It's out of your hands for someone else to deal with. So I'm really, really pleased about that. So that's actually what I did on my first night off. That and a little bit of uh, tidying up in the kitchen because um, that's bit, as, as some of you saw on one of the YouTube videos. That's getting a bit messy down there, to be honest, the kitchen. Oh, for God. It doesn't matter. This is only me here. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. I can be as messy as I want. In fact, I might... Later on, I might just take all my clothes out of the cupboard and throw them on the floor. Just for... Hello, just to annoy you. Just to annoy you. Huh? So that's what I did last Wednesday. And uh, tomorrow is my next night off. And do you know what? I'm not looking forward to my nights off now. Wednesday. I really do look forward to my nights off. My second night off is tomorrow, and I'm meeting my mate um, uh, Matt, aka Ratch, who runs the pub in Kings Cross that uh, I work in, not the Golden Line, the other one I work run there. Um, uh, I was going to talk about that a little bit. Hang on, someone wrote an email. Oh, that's it, Suko. So we will talk about that again in a minute. But he runs the other place I work at in Kings Cross. And uh, I'm meeting him tomorrow to go to our favourite burger bar. 
Now, I don't know if I remember telling you, a couple of months ago, I was supposed to meet him. And we were supposed to meet up to Miss, uh, Mr Ed's... Or is, it, is it Mr Ed's? or uh, no, Ed's Diner, that's it. Ed's Diner in Chelsea. Now, this was a branch of Ed's Diner that I've driven past for years and years and years. And Matt knew it was there as well. We used to go to Ed's Diner in Soho. But the last time we went there, we weren't very impressed. Um, I can't remember what it was. The food tasted different for some reason. So we said, well, we won't go. We'll go to another one next time. So we were going to go to the one in Chelsea. Anyway, so um, this is, as I say, a few months ago. So I'm driving there and he's walking there. OK, we got near the area. I said, I said, I think I must have gone past it. I said, I can't see it anywhere. And he said, well, where is it? I said, well, it's like on the bend, just after the bend, near the traffic lights on the King's Road. He says, well, that's funny. I've walked past there as well. There's nothing there. I said, well, it must be there somewhere. I only went past it a couple of weeks ago. And if, anyway, eventually, cut a long story short, which, as you know, is very unusual for me. Um, <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean I drag it out? What a cheek, dear. I don't drag it out at all. I just get to the point as quickly as I can. I don't... Finny fanny about, I get to the point as quickly as I can. I do not drag things out, dear, if you don't mind me saying so. So eventually, we came to the conclusion that um, <laughs> that it was gone. And eventually, I, I think, did I meet Matt in the end? Yeah, I met, I actually met him. I said, well, I'm, and I, I drove back again. I said, well, I am, I am at the place where I thought it was. And it was a building site. And the place had been knocked out. For years we'd driven past this, or I'd driven past it, and he'd walked past it. And we always said we were going to go, and eventually we went to go, and it was gone. All been knocked down, which is a great shame. And, of course, you know what they're putting there. More flats. Oh, dear. More flats. So, rather disappointed. So, the, the moral is there. If you want to do something, do it quickly before it goes. That's what I reckon. Anyway, there is another Ed's Diner in um, just off, let me think now, just off Leicester, Leicester Square, Trafalgar Square, around that area there. Just off Piccadilly, that's it. Just off Piccadilly, there's another Ed's Diner. So tomorrow, uh, I do believe I'm meeting Matt there at some point uh, early in the evening. So much looking forward to that. So that would be my night off tomorrow. Nice, isn't it? And then I get a nice early night and I'll probably be home here by about midnight, which is rather nice. I should have an early night. OK. Right then, boys and girls. Now, uh, here comes, if you want to put pen to paper, remember the email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And uh, if you're watching, you're going to love this little Jason. Jason Allen has made me this little address caption. Watch this now. You're going to love this. OK, uh, just, just before I, I, I show you that, uh, Jason... Uh, as I say, he's a, a university person and he does all these little... If When I want something done, anything to do with uh, computer programming or anything like that, I go to Jason and he sorts out. He wrote the Bingay programme that we're going to try and use in a, a few weeks' time. Disappointingly, we've only got three players. Now, we could do with a few more players, OK? If you'd like to play Bingay on the radio then send in your email address with just a little note saying, I'd like to join into Bingay, and you could win a Bingay mug. All free of charge. You see, it's I am a registered charity, you know that, don't you? Give, 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 that's me. Give, give, give. If you want to do that, then let me know. Just drop me an email and say, hi, Chris, I'd like to play uh, Bingay on the radio. And uh, we'll take it from there. And we hope to start that in a couple of weeks' time after I've come back from my sister's. All right? I still haven't been there yet. I know I go on and on about it for weeks before I go. That's because I'm excited. I'm excited to go and see my sister and her lovely children. Yes. Tracy, my niece. Gary, the older nephew. And Jimmy, the younger nephew. Yes. All going up to see those shortly. Uh, yeah. Jason writes my bits and pieces. If you want to have a look at some more of his work, uh, feel free to do so. His uh, website is www.jason-allen.co.uk. Right? www.jason-allen.co.uk. And you can see some other bits and pieces uh, that he's worked on there. He's always looking for other jobs. He's only a young lad, which means... 
when you uh, when you um, uh, find people who are quite young and are just kind of starting out into life, I often find they put a lot more effort into something <clears throat> than perhaps someone who's been not always. Don't get me wrong, not always, but someone who's been around for years and years. You know, I mean, I suppose the same could be said about my DJing, could it? Eh? Do young up and coming DJs put a lot more effort into it than I do? Possibly. I don't know. <laughs> right then, here comes... Watch this, you watch this now. Here comes the postal address. It's Chris Reardon. United Kingdom Talk. P.O. Box 4073. Bracknell, B-R-A-C-K-N-E-L-L. R-G-4-2-9-E-D. OK, once again, it's Chris Reardon, United Kingdom Talk, P.O. Box 4073, Bracknell, B-R-A-C-K-N-E-L-L, R-G-4-2-9-E-D. All right, did you like that little, little, little graphic thing there? It's very clever, isn't it? I wish I could do things like that. Useless me, useless me. He's also working. I know it's. I know you'll probably think this is a bit early, but he's also working on a little Christmas, a little Christmas opening and closing caption as well. Yes, we'll have snow and everything else. I don't know what else he's got to um, uh, lined up for that. So looking forward to that. Okay, let's uh, do some emails. Just a couple of quickies to start with from uh, Dave. Dave, hello, Dave. I love your surname, Dave. It reminds me of someone in Dallas. Certainly does. He says, hi, Chris, because he's been uh, watching or listening to the show. Um, do you remember we were mentioning about these slugs? I have a terrible problem with slugs and snails in the garden. It was actually particularly bad last year. Worst year ever for slugs. I mean, if you're French and you like eating snails, that's all right, dear. But I don't. Can you... Uh, that's actually... Uh, can you eat garden snails? Are there different types of snails? Have we got any chefs watching? Eh? Can you... Does it matter? Do, do they have to be specific types of snails that you eat? Or could I, say, go out into the garden, collect all the snails, I don't know, and cook them and eat them? Not that I would, because... Oh, or it's just something... It's not right, is it, eating snails? Oh, and oysters. Oh! They, they, they get the oyster, don't they? They go... <coughs> And they swallow the old thing. It must be like swallowing snot, is it? <laughs> what do you mean I do enough of that? What with my noise? You like my noise, didn't you? I'm not going to do it again now. No. My, my, my snot. Do you want me? All right, then, once. You ready? <laughs> That's enough. You're not getting any more than that. You're only the once. Only, that was for demonstration purposes. Demonstration purposes, all right? I couldn't eat snails. Do people eat slugs as well? Because aren't they the same as snails, but without the shell on the end? God was very cruel there, I think. He gave some of them some of them home and not others. Is that what they are? Are slugs homeless snails? And why did God not give them a home? That's the question we need to ask ourselves today, I think. Oh, I feel sorry for them now, slugs, don't you? They're homeless snails. <laughs> But as anyone watching who knows anything about that, um, can you just eat any sort of snail? Could I gather snails from the garden and start munching? You know, you get one of the... Or you have to cook them. For, I don't even know how you cook them. You have to cook them first. And then don't you prize them out of the shell with... Oh, it's horrible, isn't it? With one of those cocktail sticks. Oh, it's, oh, bleh. oh, it made me feel ill, Dave. Oh, no, I can't be eating snails and things like that. Or oysters. Oysters. Oysters apparently are very good for your libido as well, aren't they? So people say. <laughs> Don't, well, I shan't be needing any of those, thank you. Anyway, uh, Dave writes, a very easy, cheap, non-toxic way to trap, to trap slugs. Bury a pie tin or plastic container up to its... Oh, oh I've got oh, to sneeze now. Oh, just a minute now. Let me just blow my nose. Stay down. I'm just going to cut the sound so you don't hear this. One second. Excuse me. Oh, oh my word. Now, where are we? Oh, 
and my ears have opened. That's it. I can hear everything so much better now. Very easy, cheap, non-toxic way to trap slugs. Bury a pie tin or plastic container up to its lip in the garden. Oh, the, the lip. Is that the lip, lip there? You've got to pull it into the garden. Oh, the lip up. <laughs> Put one or two inches of stale beer in the pan. The slugs will be attracted to the yeast smell. All you have to do is dump them out and refill the trap every day. Dave in Florida. Do you know what? I might try that. The only thing is I've got no beer here. I don't drink. Do I have to buy a can of beer just for the slugs? <laughs> I'm sure there are laws against that, you know. Asking slugs or snails if they want a beer or two. Mind you, uh, I quite like the idea of that, Dave. I might try that. Might just try that and uh, we'll see how we get on, all right? Thank you, Dave. Oh, can I just write something down here? <clears throat> right, that's it. Work that down. Thanks very much for that, Dave. Uh, and hello to Marsha. Hello, Marsha, who has become a fa my Facebook friend, haven't you, my darling? Marsha, uh, I think I read this out on the last show, but she's uh, added to it. But I'll read the first email out again. Hi, Chris. Glad to make a connection for you. I've been a phantom listener for a while. <laughs> I enjoy your stories. And um, I wrote back to Marsha asking where she was in that because um, there's a little picture on her Facebook. And I thought it, I thought it looked rather Caribbean. You know, beautiful scenery. Um, everyone looked her... Well, she looks rather relaxed in the photo. And I said, is it the Caribbean? And uh, Marsha wrote back, I was actually born in Birmingham, England. Now, I've only... Uh, I've been to Birmingham once, Marsha. A lot of concrete round there, my darling, isn't there? It's quite fun. I, I, I can't think what the motorway is now, but even the motorway doesn't actually stop in Birmingham. It flies over it. Which, I mean, this says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> but you're kind of, to get to Birmingham, you're kind of on this motorway and all this beautiful green countryside. And when you're like a couple of miles away, you're thinking, well, I can't see any. It must be around here somewhere, Birmingham. You know, maybe you have to come off the motorway and drive for miles and miles down the side road. It's a bit like that going to my sister's house, actually. It is a, it's a real pain of a journey to get to my sister's house. Uh, so you're on this motorway, and you're going round and round, and I'm not thinking, where is Birmingham? I can't see it. And eventually you kind of turned round this corner, and there it is. This enormous, grey, sprawling mass. And I don't know, whoever designed that city, it's, I mean, it's just not... I mean, if you live there, I, I apologise to you. You know, we all, we all live where we live, don't we? But I don't know who designed that. It's just all... It looks like a whole horrible concrete mess as, it, as you come round the corner. Anyway, I hope you don't mind me saying that, Marsha. I don't, I don't know how you... You probably feel it's home, don't you? I hope I haven't insulted you, my darling. So she was born in Birmingham. My mum and dad are Jamaican. I lived in London for many years and then moved here to the States. Your show reminds me of home, especially when you mention certain places that I am familiar with. Next time I visit, I am definitely going for tea in the restaurant you mentioned a few shows back. Oh, would that be the one when we went to um, Fortnum and Mason's? For afternoon tea, Marsha. Don't forget, it is very, very expensive there, OK? You'd be looking at about £40 each. $80 each. Just for afternoon tea. You see, you're not paying for the food so much, are you? You're paying for for the whole atmosphere and that sort of thing. Now, um, I know you're fairly new to the show, Marsha. One thing I don't like to do is waste money. Mum told me, I don't, I don't waste anything, food or whatever. It's very interesting. Recently, here in the UK, um, they've come out with some figures that say we actually chuck an awful lot of food out. I can't remember the exact figure, but then Gordon Brown, who's our Prime Minister at the moment, possibly not for much longer, I don't know, um, is not particularly popular at the moment, but nevertheless, he reckons if we were more careful in supermarkets and things like that, we were probably... We we probably chuck away eight pounds worth of uh, on average eight pounds worth of food a day. I'm sure I saw one figure somewhere that some households chuck up to 
a third of their food away every week. And I find that quite unbelievable. When you imagine all those starving people there are in the world, and I know there are people probably watching and listening at the moment, who say, oh, don't start going on about the starving people. Why not? It's just such a terrible, terrible waste. Of course, <clears throat> I suppose, if even if we weren't chucking, people would argue, even if we weren't chucking the food away, there would still be starving people. It's not going to go to them. Well, I know that. That's not the point, is it? It's just such a waste to chuck away so much food like that. I cannot believe people chuck away up to a third of their shopping. That's mad. You're throwing money down the drain. And it's just such a terrible, terrible waste. I don't, I, I, I don't think I very, very rarely chuck food away. Sometimes... Maybe if I buy a, a bag of carrots, OK, and I don't use them all, and then some of them go, go mouldy, I might chuck those away. But to be honest, if they've only just gone mouldy, I'll peel them and the mould comes off with a peel, doesn't it? And cook them like that. And they're fine, there's nothing wrong with them. But very, very rarely, extremely rarely, do I chuck food away. Because it's also wasting money, isn't it? You're buying some. You, you might as well just screw up a few coins and throw them out in the street. If you're going to do that, such such, uh, such a thing like that, terrible, terrible, terrible waste of money. Don't chuck food away. Be just be more careful. More careful. I spoke to my sister as well. I said, "Do you chuck loads of food away?" She says, "Oh no, not really." I said, "What sort of things do you chuck away?" And she said, "Similar to me, sometimes if the fruit goes off, well, don't buy so much then." Simple as that. Don't buy so much. I wonder sometimes, is it that old saying that your eyes are bigger than your stomach? You know, when you're in the supermarket, it's oh so easy. It's oh so easy to fill up that trolley, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I do, I've done it myself before. But you see, I, I will, if I buy too much, I will still eat it. I'll say, well, I'm not throwing that away, and I will eat it. Maybe that's why I've got a little bit weightier uh, at the moment. I'm about 12 stone 8 now. <laughs> could could it be because I'm buying too much food? I, it's, incidentally, Suko, nothing to report this week. Suko is keeping an eye on my fast food intake this year. And Suko, there is nothing to report this week at all. <clears throat> nothing at all. Oh, oh, hang on a minute. No, I've lied. There was a ham and mustard sandwich on the way home last night and the night before. And two packets of cheese and onion crisps. Do we count those? I think you better put them down, just in case, because I, I, I will let you decide, Suko, what is naughty and what isn't, OK? Back to Marsha. Um, yeah, so if you do go for tea in Fortnum and Masons, just a reminder, it is very expensive there, Marsha. But for the experience, if, you, if anyone's coming to the UK, and it's not the only place to do afternoon tea, actually, um, there are varying... Uh, a lot of the hotels do it, and they are varying rates, OK? Some are cheaper than others. Um, I gather... Let's let's just have a little quick look. I, perhaps I should have printed some of these off earlier for you. Uh, if I just have a quick look on, on the computer for you and uh, see if we can find any other cheaper places or indeed dearer. Some are more expensive. The one at Fortnum and Mason's cost, cost, it actually cost me about £42 per person. And for that, we got um, a really nice cup of tea. Um, we had Welsh rabbit with a bit of bacon on the top, which is cheese on toast, and some cakes and scones. And it, it was all very, and all very pleasant. Served by a waiter, really nice in there. Um, but other places do it as well. Let's just, that was 42 Let's try the, uh, what else have we got in London? Hilton. Hilton, London. Let's see if they do it. Afternoon tea. Let's have a quick look. I bet they do do it. Oh, London. Oh, hang on. No. Ah, can't. Uh, no, I don't see anything for that. Oh, London afternoon tea. Oh, this is good. I've just found a, a, a little website for London afternoon tea. Was it called Top Table? Afternoon tea. It says, oh, yeah, look at this. If you want to have a look at this, it's uh, toptable.co.uk. 
toptable.co.uk, okay? It says, take an afternoon tea in London is as British as Pim's Cricket Bulldogs and Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> afternoon tea in London has always been a popular pastime with tourists and ladies who lunch, but ever since it became all the rage with London's chick, uh, Irati, its popularity has hit dizzy new heights. Nibbling on tiny sandwiches, dainty cakes and sipping tea, or maybe the odd glass of champagne, which, uh, which we had as well, incidentally, has simply become one of the coolest ways to spend an afternoon in London. It really is nice. Um, the Ritz. Here are the Ritz. Now, that, I bet that's dear, that one. Let's have a quick look. Um, afternoon tea. Oh, hang on. Sample dishes. What are we... Oh, it's... Um, oh, I don't know. Let's have a quick look here. Photo menus, details and booking. Men menus, perhaps. Oh, come on. Why is it always so slow like that? Uh, so I'll just type in afternoon tea, see what comes up. I can't see anything on there now, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> just to compare it with what I paid. That's all I want to do, really. Oh, no, it's... No, I can't find it now. We haven't got time to find it now, really, have we? Um, starters. Oh, afternoon teas. We are afternoon tea. Oh, £36 per person. OK, so that's rough. That's And that's in the Ritz. Oh, well, that's all right, isn't it? Um, and you get for that... Afternoon tea sandwiches, smoked salmon, egg mayonnaise with cress, ham, chicken and mayonnaise, all different sandwiches. Oh, that's not bad. £36. And that's in the Ritz. And as I say, a lot of the other places do it as well. Uh, hotels, if, if you ever want to do that, OK? That's it. Not cheap. That, that's a whole afternoon's entertainment, dear. Of course, you could ask me to come as well and I could provide the entertainment for you. And as always, you won't get in in jeans and T-shirts, OK? You've got to wear nice clothes. You've got to wear a jacket, a shirt, a pair of trousers and shoes. No trainers. No trainers. <laughs> it's hard for me to dress like that. Tell me that. <laughs> All right, Marsha. So there we are. Uh, and she says, good guess on the picture. I went to my uncle's wedding in Jamaica. The picture was from Jamaica. I knew it was the Caribbean uh, in February. It was awesome. A beautiful place called Morant Bay. And that's from Marsha. Thank you, Marsha. Uh, I've actually been to the Caribbean a few times. I've been lucky enough to go to Barbados, which is very nice. Um, and St. Lucia. Which I preferred St. Lucia to Barbados, to be honest. Jamaica, I only visited there for about two hours uh, when I was on a cruise ship a few years ago. It wasn't a particularly expensive cruise ship. It was a, an air tours one. But it was a, a lovely holiday, a, a week on a cruise ship. I actually, I actually, I just didn't tell you this really. I went with a friend. We were supposed to do, it was actually an ex of mine. We were supposed to do a week on the cruise, okay? And then a week in Mexico. Well, I'm afraid after the cruise, I went home because I just had enough of him. Oh, it was an, an absolute night. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Come on, gang. Who's been on? Who's known someone for years and years and years and then went on a holiday with them and it was a disaster? Has that happened to you as well? Tell me. Let me know. Please let me know. I need to know that that's not only just happened to me. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk and i don't know neither of us because we laugh well i haven't spoken to him for quite some time now but we both laughed about it afterwards oh i've just lost um what's happened to my sound one minute something's gone a bit wrong there have i just kicked something oh i think just a minute now i've done something wrong here oh i think i've kicked something hang on let me just pull pull a pull a plug out here that's it is that working there we are Sorry, I think the sound went a bit funny then, didn't it? Um, yeah, we, neither of us had a, cl had a clue afterwards why, why it didn't work out. Because we went on holiday after that and it was fine twice. No, three times. Three times after that we went on holiday together and it was great. Isn't that weird? Have you ever been on holiday with someone, anyone, OK? And it's not worked out. Do you know why? And do you still talk to that person? Let me know. Chris at uh, UnitedKingdomTalk.com. 
www.ocean-rescue.co.uk. Anyway, so we had a, um, a week on the boat, after which I went home early and he went on to Mexico. And one of the places we visited on the boat, well, a couple of different places. Uh, one was Honduras, which I found um, very poor. They were very poor there. And I have to say, I didn't feel safe at all walking around the shopping, the, 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 the main shopping area there. Now, if you're in the States or in the UK, do not think of a main shopping area as one of the places you go to this was like a it was more like a marketplace it was like a big concrete shopping type center thing when it goes on i'll have to leave the phone well let me just turn the volume off a minute we can't be there we are turn it off that's it turn the mobile off. oh why is that still ringing just a minute there we are turn that off um, don't think of a shopping centre like a big mall or something like that. This this is just basic. I mean, it, it was almost like a car park. It was actually more like a car park than anything else. And um, various stores and what have you in there. And very dusty, you know, no vegetation around or anything like that. Uh, that was Honduras. And I also went to... Um, uh, Jamaica, that, that's what I was going to say I went to Jamaica there and again, I have to say, didn't feel particularly safe there, Marsha um, we got off the boat <clears throat> and I, did, did we walk? or no, no, I think a, a little bus took us to this shopping place where they were selling jewellery and all this sort of stuff which I have absolutely no interest in jewellery Never had out. I just don't understand wearing bits of metal and other bits and pieces and rings and things. I, I just don't get it. I, <laughs> I don't, I, I'm a very practical person, Marsha. I really am. If I buy something, it's got to do something. You know, gadgets? Oh, yes. Give me a gadget any day of the week. But bits of metal, don't understand it. Now, I do have one piece of jewellery only. Well, I, I say that. I've only got one piece of jewellery on and I've got another thing downstairs. This is uh, just a little emerald on a chain. Right? And that was my mother's. She gave that to me when she was in hospital just before she left this world, uh, along with her um, uh, little gold uh, crucifix. So I have those two items. I do have some watches that have been bought for me over the years by mum -hmm. and dad and perhaps uh, Nan and people like that. But I don't really... I have no interest in jewellery at all. So all these people are in... I mean, I went and looked in the shops. Um, but walking around there, there were people with guns, you know, police uh, 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 men with guns and things like that, and didn't feel safe at all. And they were saying, oh, take off anything shiny, you know, and all this business. And I thought, oh, blimey, you know, do we want to do that? So, so I hate, hate to say that to you, Marsha, but didn't really feel safe there. And also, while we were there, a couple of people kind of crossed the road and uh, to like a, um, uh, a roundabout, you know, a, a, a roundabout. And these people were standing on there. And at that point, a policeman, it was definitely a policeman, went running over to them. Where are you? Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, well, we're just going to get a, a cab to go back to the boat now. OK, you stay here. I, I'll arrange a cab for you. And they stayed there. So, and, he, and this this policeman, he pulled... Oh, is that door keeps banging? Just a minute. Sorry about that. You could hear that banging door there. Um, and uh, uh, he called a, a car over. And he says, right, uh, show me your papers. And this mini cab, I suppose it was, had to get all the papers out and showed them everything. And he checked the car over, looked around the car and everything. Right. These two people, uh, you're to take them straight back to the boat and don't take them anywhere else. And don't forget, I've got your number. And, and, and off, off they went in a cab. And I thought, well, that was all a bit, you know, it doesn't... I know they're doing it so that tourists are safe, but it's difficult. You know, when, when something like that happens, you kind of think, oh, there's something wrong here, you know? So sorry, Marsha. Sorry to have to say that, but I didn't feel particularly safe in Jamaica. Although I did in St. Lucia. Barbados? Um, Barbados, yes. Was quite happy there, except for a couple of areas in Bridgetown, 
where there were like side streets. And I remember walking down one of the side streets with a friend of mine at the time, Steve. And um, an elderly lady, nice lady, elderly lady, came out of one of the houses. She said, where are you two going? Or we're just going to have a walk up here. No, no, you don't want to go up there. Stay on the main road which I thought was very nice, obviously looking out for us. So, you know, it's 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 all over, isn't it? There are the areas of London that you might not want to walk through. Um, it's just the way it is, I suppose. Anyway, Marsha, lovely to hear from you, my darling. Tell me more about you. What do you do? Do you tell us what job you do? You don't tell me what job you do. You must tell me what job you do. We need to know more about Marsha, who is a, a, a new person, aren't you, my love? Welcome along. Um... Marsha, of course, a phantom listener, yes? She listens secretly. No, I, no, hang on a minute. Fan, do, do you listen secretly, like on earphones or something like that? Or are you just a phantom listener who I didn't know about until now? Yes. Which is it? Let me know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Got to say hello also to Mohammed, who says, uh, is uh, commenting on the show on Tuesday the 1st of July. Uh, your show is very interesting. I like your accent and it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohammed. And he left that little message on the, uh, on the, uh, on the um, podcast uh, site there. Uh, as always, best way to contact the show, please, is by email rather than leaving comments. Because sometimes uh, on the uh, podcast site and on the YouTube, sometimes I miss the comments. OK, uh, and uh, I always feel a little bit guilty when weeks later I might come across and I thought, oh, I didn't perhaps read that one out. So please, if you want to uh, send an email to the show, that's always the best way of commenting. OK, it's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, OK, uh, something a bit different here. Had an email here from someone in Japan. Um... J I think the name is J Jay Kerchek. J Kerchek, I think, is the name. All right, that's that's the only name I've got on there. Uh, who says, hi, Chris. Well, you know I live in Japan. Now, I, I always read uh, emails out, whether they agree with me or not, OK? If they come in or they criticise someone else, that's OK, or some something else, then that's OK, um, because the people that they're criticising have always got the right to reply as well, all right? Fairly light-hearted show. Sometimes we touch on serious things, sometimes sad. It's a show about life. This programme is about life. All right? And whatever, whatever gets tangled up in my strange life. Anyway, uh, Jay Kerchak writes, Well, you know I live in Japan. Japan is a country very concerned about global warming. I watched a four-hour show today discussing about the global warming effect. It covers the many problems of global warming. Now, this is interesting. When you think of global warming, I think most of us think about perhaps rising sea levels. Probably, I would say that's the only thing that a lot of people think about. I was actually watching uh, the news just before I came upstairs today, and funnily enough, uh, they were talking on the news about Japan and how Japan is heating up. And they are measuring the um, temperature of the earth. One thing that it's affecting is the growth of rice. And uh, they believe people in, I think, the north of the south of Japan, their rice crops are not doing so well. But on the other hand, people in the north of Japan can now grow rice where they couldn't before. So interesting there. But Jay Kerchek, I hope that is your name. I've, I've got that off the top of your email, you see. Says, it covers the many programmes, the programme, the recent dengue fever epidemics, desertif des desertification, you know, when the, the soil turns into desert, mosquitoes, tornadoes, the melting ice in two poles, corn fuel, food wasting, Food shortage and the G8 summit in Hokkaido, which of course has happened now. This email, of course, um, as you know, at the moment the show is recorded a week in advance, so this will be a week ago. Yeah, don't forget that will change soon in a couple of weeks. 
Uh, this person says, last time they made a programme showing the American whaling history. That's really shocking, horrific. The world whale drop decreased from 30 to 40,000 to 650 to 2,000. And uh, he sends a link for a graph. He says, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Now the Americans talks to stop other countries, stop whaling, though actually these countries really effectively use the resources from the whale, like Japan. How many whales have the Americans killed? And then they say this and that. I really hate that. All countries join the Kyoto Protocol, but the US of A on Australia refused to join in. I don't have particularly complaint to Australia because their CO2 emissions per capita is really low. We're getting a little bit, a little bit into the technical side of things here. And then this person says, but I really hate Americans because they're really selfish. They have just been ignoring the global warming and the CO2 emissions is still increasing in America. And again, he sends a link to a Wikipedia chart. The person goes on to say, how selfish are those Americans? They enjoyed their convenience, freedom and pleasure, but they ignored many people in developing countries suffering due to their enjoyment. It says, we can force the Yankees to join in the Kyoto Protocol. Can I propose to boycott the Amer guy? Amer guy. I'm not sure what that is, Ama guy. Let's just stop all trading with the USA and let it die out itself. Let's just pirate all American software, movies, and shut down all those junk food restaurants. What do you think? We can't just let them spoil our world because we are living on the same world. And that's from Jay Kerchek in Japan. Interesting there. You see, the thing is, from your email, you were talking about everyone, not just a few people. And people are different. I'm sure there are many, many Americans who have just heard that and are shocked that you think that way. The thing is, there are plenty of people in America who don't waste stuff. There are plenty of people in America who believe in helping other countries, and indeed they do. There are plenty of people in America who are concerned about global events. Japan isn't the only country that will be affected by global warming. Indeed, in America, I gather that the hurricane seasons and the tornadoes are a lot more fiercer now. Plenty of people there that know that global warming will affect them as well. You're kind of blaming an entire... Would you, would you say a race? Um, no. Uh, you're kind of blaming an entire country of people for perhaps the actions of just a few. There are many people who blame a certain religious organisation for all the troubles in the world at the moment. Many people you talk to would blame one particular religion. But again, it's only a few people. It's not everyone. And I think it's a little bit much to blame an entire country for one problem. Usually it's politicians. 
I get just very annoyed when I see politicians from whatever country standing there and, you know, making sure, hello, I'm all right, Jack. But that isn't, that isn't the whole country of people. It's only a few people and they're everywhere. They are everywhere. These, we, we have them here in the UK. People who are only interested in themselves and no one else. Some people I've worked for over the years, you know, OK, you, you might work for them, but what are they really like? When you, when you realise what they're really like, and perhaps not, not just people I work for, but other people I've known over the years, and they have only one interest, and that is themselves. They don't care about anyone else. Even something as simple as perhaps driving along with someone in a car and they chuck a crisp packet out the window because they just don't, they don't care about anyone else. When really you should take that crisp packet back and put it in the bin yourself. Even if the cars behind are chucking the crisp packets out the window, doesn't mean you have to do it as well. I do see what you're saying there. But you can't blame the people or the people for that. Some of the people are not educated in sort of the the smaller parts, the smaller towns in America. Because America isn't just New York and Manhattan. It's much bigger than that. Much bigger than that. If anyone wants to come back to this email, then please feel free to do so, as always. It's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And that's uh, where I have to leave you today, I'm afraid. Sorry to, to finish off on that little note there. But as I say, everyone's got the right reply to that, and I'm sure we'll get some replies to that one. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks very much, as always, for listening and watching the programme today. I'll see you in a couple of days' time. Myself, Chris Reardon. Bye-bye now. <laughs>